Chris stared at Thomas with pure hatred. He seemed so very happy at their situation. Friends together, a brave fellowship of quadrilaterals on a quest for greatness. That would be fine. But it was all the obvious observation that Thomas was doing which grated. Every time they saw something vaguely new, Chris would hear a satisfied little hmm from the vaulting idiot. He hoped the next portal would split them up. If only for a few levels. This was his chance, a moment to shine. This was game day. This would not do. John needed room to show off his exceptional skills. As it was, he was trapped on the wrong side of these little dot things. Where did they come from, anyway? Ah, John inhaled the air of the open space, and it smelled of awesome. Time to flex those muscles, to put his training to use time to show those little dots how it was done. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he practiced in the mirror all these years.
was happy to keep helping. He felt it was important to his image that he was seen to help the little guys. He didn't mind them so much either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. The angry orange one was less immediately likeable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John. Interesting. A floating target. This would require coordination, balance, and timing. John was sure the dots would be lost, but he was happy to guide them to triumph.
that's what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. So, this was how Claire would die. She knew it would happen eventually. She was rubbish at jumping, and she moved slowly. She felt a little like her continued existence was breaking some kind of natural order. The crumbling pillar was a dramatic death, she supposed. Wait, what? Claire couldn't shake the feeling that she was not, in fact, dead. It was at that moment that Claire realized she had superpowers. She'd need a cape. There was no getting around that. You couldn't be a superhero without a cape. Claire didn't want confusion. If you saw a cape, that made matters clear. You knew what you were dealing with. Claire was all about communication. And, you know, floating in water, which was her superpower. Fear not, my skinny friends, for I am Claire, and I will save you. Claire needed to come up with a superhero name as soon as possible. Claire was rubbish. Claire arrived just in time, which was, of course, the perfect moment for superheroes to arrive. Water began to rise. Claire vowed to save this little rectangle in as many restarts as it took. Claire wondered if Thomas would make a good sidekick. Or was she more the Lone Avenger type? She liked that. The sole hero in a world of rectangles and conveniently placed pools of toxic water. were a bit of a fixture here. Claire wondered why the world made it so difficult.
created a nemesis, a villain who would show their true colours at the worst possible moment, hurting all she held dear. Chris was the most obvious choice. He seemed stroppy enough, and his jump was so pathetic that it conveniently avoided Claire's insecurities. Yes, Chris. Diabolical Chris. The fiendish Christopher. gone. Was he off somewhere? Plotting Claire's downfall? If Claire was honest, and she had to be because she was a superhero, this was a troubling turn of events. Still, there were reasonably sized bodies of water to cross. Platforms over water, eh? Claire's newly heightened senses told her that there were multiple paths across with various possible configurations of the little posse. Hmm. 